here we go. Third time's the charm. So what if everything you've learned was BS? Which of course to a chemist, to you as my dear chemistry students, means boron sulfur. Or to your teacher, because I love food, Brussels sprouts, can't get enough of them. Really, it does mean our belief system. So what is your belief system? That's really what my question is going to. Oh, it can also mean chocolate covered Brussels sprouts. Did not know about that until today. And of course, what we're all working towards are bachelors of science. Go Nittany Lions. So sit back, listen. Can you just write about two things that strike you? Or you can just write about your belief system and how it has changed uh, throughout your year of general chemistry, what you've learned. I don't know, or you can make a video for me. So these first three slides are three myths that I first read about in a book that I talk about later on. Uh, first myth, and it totally changed my perspective and my teaching. Um, I actually read it just before the whole COVID thing came. Uh, myth number one is only matter matters. So our reality is located in tangible structures of matter. Matter, of course, the study of chemistry is study of matter. Anything can be measured, quantified, analyzed. Aristotle's empirical materialism. Matter is fixed, non-changing, and therefore real. Descartes ushered in the scientific revolution, or so they say. He brought in our analytical reductive reasoning. It's in the next slide. But all science is certain evident knowledge. We reject all knowledge, which is merely probable. And the idea of dualism, right and wrong reactant product, you get the idea. And of course, the mechanistic universe. It's all mathematical equations, which actually it is. That is the Newtonian clock. The world can be understood through the knowledge of its physical parts. So Newtonian clock, you can, it works. So we should have given that to me for my 25 years at Mount Hood instead of the clock that already doesn't work after one month. Uh, so the laws of nature, and, you know, they talk about that we're in the information, information age. Not really. We're in the materialistic age. Just look up and see all the Amazon planes that are flying over you or all the Amazon trucks delivering packages. Fascinating, isn't it? Oh, and if you've never seen, so we have the Newtonian clock. That's the Newtonian man that you are a sum of your parts. You can be explained in a mechanistic way. We have determinism. So determinism is cause and effect for every action. There is a reaction. So in chemistry, reactant, product. We can predict and control the outcome of nature. We have a pill for that. Or you have a gene and your genes determine who you are. Do you believe that? And of course, myth number three, reductionism, that you can be reduced. Sorry, I was too fast on that one. Uh, you can be reduced to the sum of your parts. And so perhaps that is part of your belief system. So which one is chemistry? Well, let's go back to this slide. So as you've been with me for the whole year, you've seen this slide before. How small is an atom? And those of you who weren't with me, your teacher should have talked about this, um, however long ago you took it, that a spider web, we think about is a micron. So that symbol shouldn't be so scary anymore, right? A micrometer, 10 to negative six of a meter. Your hair is a millimeter. So think about that. The spider web is, the width of the spider web is a micrometer. A carbon atom, the atoms on the periodic table are about one and a half angstroms. 10 to negative 10th meters, which means about 7,000 carbon atoms can fit across the width of a spider's web. So go outside. Spider webs are all over. Don't be freaked out by the spider. There are friends. And ponder how many atoms there are. And then ask yourself, wait, am I reducing this beautiful work of art by the spider to 7,000 carbon atoms? Am I determining it? Or am I being materialistic? Oh, we can even go further because chemistry then makes it into the carbon atoms combined with nitrogens and oxygens and of course hydrogen into a protein that forms a beta sheet 
and is one of the strongest things out there. And so we're making Kevlar vests out of it, um, parachutes. And of course, we have the periodic table. Reductionism, determinism. So is everything reduced to the elements? Is everything determined by what elements you're made up of? An atomic theory, right? So are you like the Lego man? You're just the sum of all the atoms that make you up? Is there a lot more going on in there? The vibes. This is from 2017, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, and a discussion of reductionism in medicine. So just looking over 200 years, they have a person who was sick in the 18th century. In the 19th century, it becomes, oh, we can see the lungs and we can say there's lesions and such. And then we get to the late 19th century and we have microbial theory right? And that is due to the microbes. And then we get into the late 20th century and we start saying, oh, we look at things from the molecular level and doing testing and it's the protein or the DNA and it's okay. We have a pill for that. What was wonderful, this term is Peter did a talk on the other guy. So Pastor gave us microbes. The other guy said, what if it's the Malou? that determines if the microbes can continue to that point. And the milieu, what if it's determined by much more? But it's in your genes, right? We live in the genetic age and we can heal. We can change our genes by little genetic robots. So it's in your genes. Is that being materialistic, deterministic, or reductionist? And we can pick the tarot card on DNA karma. It's only 2% of human DNA actually codes for a protein. Only 2% is the genes. So what's the other 98%? And that's what makes humans special because we're the only one that has such a huge amount of DNA and that most of it is not actually responsible directly for the code of the protein. We've just been obsessed with the code. It's the other 98%. That's fascinating. This is a quote from Dr. Bruce Lipton. It's not the karma, it's the driver. And yeah, it's a hokey picture, but what's your DNA really look like? Is it a sum of molecules or is it beautiful blossoms? Your perception, this is Dr. Bruce Lipton, always smiling. He talks about how he used to be grumpy all the time. And then one day his perception changed, that your perception at any moment influences your brain chemistry. So he's saying what comes first is the perception that changes the chemistry, which determines the fate of your cells. So you are the conductor of your molecular symphony. We also talked about, it's in your greens. So we talked about acidosis and alkalosis, and I hope you are still and continue eating your greens and your orange pumpkins. It's almost pumpkin season. And get some red in there too. So, um, vibrations, all the vibrations of all the different colors. And of course the purple and the purple cabbage. Uh, and so what signals releasing your genie, your genes? So we have the external environment, your diet, which we've talked about, as well as your friends and your support system and the environment, the home you live in, as well as inside of us, our internal milieu, your thoughts, your feelings, your intention. Our beliefs, our faith, our view of God, all of these things, as well as the memories we associate with each of these beliefs, they are the tools of our consciousness. And then each thought, each intention, each interaction with friend, each food that we eat releases a particular cascade of biochemicals, each memory of the food that we eat. And our body responds with a complex array of shifts. At least principle. Our genes only contribute to our characteristics. They do not determine them. It's a quote from Dawson Church. So he's a psychologist. And he also talks about he used to be a grumpy person. And then he had a perception change. And he talks about it's not the genes, it's the driver. Right. So we are 
a system of cooperation. Our bodies are amazing. And I'm not just talking about the physical body here. Our body doesn't make moral judgments about our feelings, our emotions, our intent. Our physical body, our chemicals just respond. And that's the part that makes it interesting that our body, our physicality cannot tell the difference between a real or a perceived threat. The ones that we create and the ones that we're actually seeing. We are the only species that have that ability to create in our mind a threat, a fear. So you always have a choice. You can choose the stress, fear response, go through the whole epinephrine, adrenaline thing, or you can choose the healing response. You always have a choice of the path through oxytocin. Butterfly, I have this on here. Just remind me to mention something to ponder also. The caterpillar that goes into the cocoon, there's nothing, nothing that's the same in the butterfly. So you always have the choice to choose love and to choose joy and to choose to play with the fairies and the gnomes. This is a book I was commenting. So Dr. Bruce Lipton, he has three books out and I highly recommend all of them. Actually, Biology of Belief, uh, a lot of you are going into biology. And so when you're ready to read it. Uh, placebo, I kept this slide in here because everybody always comments about the placebo effect. Uh, the placebo effect is the idea that most of what's happening when you take medication is the placebo. And they have this thing called the file cabinet studies, which never get published, which show that the placebo was just as good, sometimes better. Cough medication. And Joey was a little kid, which all of you are the same age as Joey. Uh, they actually removed all cough medicines because they found it's completely 85% is the placebo effect that mother giving the child the love with the cough medicine, but the parents freaked out and said, no, no, it works. So children also respond amazing to homeopathy as do pets because it's the intention when you give the homeopathic. There's also, um, yeah, so there's a slide knee surgery where they actually put the people under and only half of them actually did the knee surgery. So they put the marking on their leg, but they didn't actually do the incision. And yeah, they got really good results from the placebo effect. There you go, Major. You probably already had this done before you listened to this. So um, there's also at the bottom, it talks about the nocebo. And the nocebo is where a doctor or somebody says, this won't work. You're going to die in two weeks. Oh my gosh, you have this. And puts the fear in the person. And... Yeah, um, my Qigong teacher, so this is 26 years ago. So it was like 35 years ago. She had terminal breast cancer. She was in China and they don't tell you that there. They apparently are well beyond understanding all of this. Uh, and so everybody kept bringing her presents and stuff because the family knew, but you never tell the patient that there's no hope. And she one day was at the clinic. She had no hair left. She's going through chemo and all this stuff. And this guy sitting next to her smiling and happy and glowing. And she just says to him, what are you doing here? This is a place for sick people. And he took her hand and he said, come with me. And he took her out of there, took her to the park, introduced him to her Qigong teacher. And she learned liver cleansing and she then, her English was wonderful, was uh, sent to this country. And um, I was blessed with learning Qigong from her. She's in her 90s now. And yeah, um, Nocebo is fascinating. All right, uh, book. I haven't read this book, but I've read others by Dr. Joe Dispenza. So a couple of you, Tristan, Devin, and all of you highly recommend any of his books or his website. He has tons of seminars. Uh, this is a study I also love and I keep this in the slideshow. So some of you've heard about this before and it, it just is amazing every time. So Heart Math Institute is a real place. It's at Stanford. And this is a study they did on the heart mind connection. They're actually doing a lot of stuff with intention and sending it at test tubes with DNA and 
things that happen there. So really interesting. Some of you would be into looking those up. But anyway, they put monitors on the brain and on the heart, so the EEG and the EKG. And they also put sensors on the skin to look at the physical response. And then they had the subject stare at a blank computer screen. And then an image would appear every few seconds, just appear and disappear. And they would measured what responded first. So the images were either emotionally arousing, autopsy, sex, violence, and or they were calming. So pictures of nature or people smiling. So your teacher, um, yeah, that's Joey, smiling. And so who responded first? What responded first? Always, every person, the heart. Before the brain had any activity, the heart had responded always correctly. But there's more, there's always more. The heart and the brain responded before an image had actually flashed on the screen. So first the heart, then the brain responded, and then the image flashed on the screen, but they actually responded before the random image generator in the computer had generated the image at all. The heart, brain responded, and then the image was generated. What was generating the image? And then, so right, the heart, then the brain responded, then the computer made a choice and presented the image. Then the body responded to the image by the skin sensors. So what's controlling the show? Your heart is truly sacred. Every human heart, every heart. Uh, so our heart mind, there's something called coherence. So this fluid state and, um, so the one on the left, the red one, you can see the coherence is not there. Uh, whereas the one on the right, and in case you didn't know, 95% of the neurons between the heart and the brain are going from the heart to the brain. 95% are going from the heart to the brain. Um, this is a picture that shows what the other one shows. So when you're in a state of frustration, you don't have coherence. When you're in a state of gratitude, appreciation, et cetera, you have this beautiful rhythm that's happening. But if you notice in the appreciation one, it's not perfect. So there is variability. And what they found is the greater variability there is, the more adaptable the people are to change, the more open their heart is. So we all know people who are stuck in their way. And they find that even when they're in state of appreciation, every rhythm is exactly the same. All right, uh, heart intelligence is fast because it's magnetic. So it's the whole thing with the chakra system. There's no ego, it's just love. There's no frustration, it's just love. Um, yeah, it's a hotline to our subconscious. It's our intuition. Uh, the connection between mother and child. Mom knows something's up before the child even starts crying and is in there. Uh, and so from love springs energy, and from energy springs matter, and thus all things are possible. So I ask you, are we just molecular chemical factories? Which is what our books are about, limited to cause and effect chemical interactions? Because we have a pill for that and a vaccine. Or are we something much more? Which is why chemistry is fun, because we had a just touch on quantum. And so matter, right? Back to where we started back in 221 or 151 for a couple of you who've been with me all along, uh, that electrons matter, or it's moving around the nucleus, which is matter, and that it's pretty much empty space in there. 99.9999999999% those who were with me before, you remember me writing all the nines, or is it the quantum atom? Is it a pulsation, a field of potential pulsing? Our belief, our intention. Uh, Greg Braden, another person, I highly recommend. He has tons of stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah, a simplistic model, but you get the idea. Uh, so chemists still believe in materialism and the material interactions. Um, anyway, go out, look at the stars. And we see them all as separate stars because that's what the Hubble telescope showed us. And so ask yourself, are you comfortable with that? We like discrete particles. We like ions, atoms, and molecules. Oh my, 
we like to be able to do the math and come to an answer. And look up there, there's two trillion galaxies of stars. A tablespoon of water is Avogadro's number of water molecules. A tablespoon of water fits into the palm of your hand. That's how many molecules of water. It would take two trillion galaxies of stars. You only see about 2,000 in our galaxy when you look up there, if you were outside of the city. There is another telescope, interestingly named the Chandra Scout, excuse me, telescope, in which it showed the interconnection between all the stars in our galaxy. While we're in our class, we are all also energetically connected. We're all watching this at the same time. Ponder that one. And so back to DNA, because that's actually my background. Um, and so that code, ACGT, is it a code or is it a symphony? Can meditation, prayer, service, gratitude, change your DNA or rather change your expression? There's been suggestions that could actually change it. So look at the pattern, look at the shape of DNA. And remember the biggest change of all, when they looked at the telomeres, epigenetic change is service. So the study on depression, people in China were the ones who got better because they served others power of prayer for others. I've been obsessed with what prayer is and we're usually taught it incorrectly. Uh, this is a picture, here we go, slide of the ice crystals. So, shoot, I forgot the guy's name. Um, and he took water and you would either sing to it or say a word and then they'd freeze it and they get different crystals. So the one at the bottom, compassion, gratitude, wisdom, or playing different songs. And the top right, you can see they couldn't even make a crystal if they did certain words. Um, anyway, just Google ice crystals if you're interested. So the healing of vibration. So there's healing sounds in Qigong. I do this on a meditative walk every day. Um, so COVID allowed me the chance to learn these sounds. The chakras are actually a vibrations, colors of vibration, all of this goes together. Acupuncture, we put the needles in because it's a placebo effect. You have to feel like something's being done to you, but you do not have to have the needles to have the effect ponder that. Singing bowls, it's all vibrations, extremely powerful. And what really are giggles, jiggles, and wiggles? Oh, they are good vibes. Uh, and so vibes are much stronger and faster in the chemical messages. That's a protein. I actually studied a lot of proteins and that's my background. And so proteins, look at them when you take enzymology or you take biochemistry, because most of you will, look at the protein and see the vibrations in it. So do we have constructive vibes like Qigong, yoga, Qi? We don't really have a word in English. I pondered this for decades when I first learned about Qi. Um, and really, I think the word for Qi in our language of English is love. So prana in Sanskrit, uh, they often say the vital force and that vital force would be love. There's also the wrong signal. So the destructive interference, uh, which brings dis-ease. And so it could be a trauma, uh, it could be a toxic food, uh, it could be toxic thoughts, would all cause destructive interference. The protein can't fold. So optimize your cells, optimize your life, optimize your quantum potential. You are a physical being, but you're also an energetic being on top of that. So I didn't take a picture of me trying to dance, <laughs> but my electrons are always dancing in full color, full spectrum with my awareness. So I'll ask you as we bring this to a close, are you comfortable with discrete particles to explain your existence? The catkins and the anions, the red and blue oxes that we just have been talking about, receptors, Right? Ions, metals, and molecules, oh my, that bind to receptors and the proteins change. And that's what it's about. Diets and drugs, you can change those. Hopefully you're all eating your apple a day. 
doing your meditation. There'll be a place for you to write about it. And then you can email me in a year, in 10 years, and tell me how awesome everything still is going. Acidosis, alkalosis, or earth, water, air, and fire, and ether. Don't forget that fifth element. So I ask you, first of all, how comfortable are you with this slide? Intangible waves, quantum entanglement, and string theory, the vibes, the infinite potential of giggles and jiggles, of butterfly entropy, electromagnetic signaling, consciousness, energy healing, and miracles. Master of love, that love heals all. Or are you more comfortable with this? Of waking up and going to sleep like this, really? Because many of you wrote to me that you didn't like that. And keep it up then. Wake up with gratitude. Wake up with your hand on your heart and with puppy love. Wake up with compassion. It's so when they talk to the Tibetan monks, that's what they say they are chanting is compassion for all beings. If you want to be happy, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion because happiness is making others lives easier so one more piece the earth's magnetic resonance vibrates at the same frequency as our hearts and so you determine what frequency that is by your thoughts your intentions me again doing qigong i do it every day before class I wake up before class, after class, sending intentions of love and joy to every single one of you, every single day. And so with love, all things are possible. Um, yeah. And so that's me. This is Dragonfly. When I, there's the blue ox behind. So I ask again, just write down about your boron sulfur. What are two things in the video that struck you? Or just talk to me about your belief system and how it may have grown or changed in the past year in your chemistry class. All right, bye-bye, namaste. It has been wonderful having all of you in my class this term, previous terms, previous years. I hope to see you all again soon. Namaste.